Good evening, professors. My name is Yen Zhuang. Today, I will be covering on the topic of IoT networking for smart farming. So, let's begin. Before that, let me bring you through the overview of my presentation. I have split it up into these different categories. Firstly, we will be talking, ab talking about IoT in smart farming. Secondly, Singapore's initiative of 30 by 30. Thirdly, the hardware of IoTs. Fourth, machine to machine non IP protocol stacks. Then, IoT gateway. Also, I will be slotting in a local case study of Abbey Farm IoT implementation. Finally, I will be evaluating and then conclude this presentation. So let's begin. As we know, IoT also known as the Internet of Things only started becoming a term in the 21st century. As we see more and more of our sectors and activities leading towards the direction of adopting technologies into play. Therefore, in order to tap on these resources, we have to understand how networking works before we can proceed to understand how IoT can actually be implemented and help us. So from this diagram, you can see four distinct layers. Basically, these four distinct layers, the application layer, transport layer, network layer, and the physical and Mac layer is actually an architecture deployed into IoT hardware. As it is proven that this particular architecture with these four distinct layers are more beneficial for this kind of hardware. Next. So as I mentioned, this is actually a quote mentioned by Minister Masogos Zukifi. He did mention that our 30 by 30 vision is to grow enough food in Singapore to meet 30% of our nutrition needs by 2030. Therefore, my presentation will be more towards the area of food crops like vegetables instead of other urban farming such as the animal such as livestock. Okay, so let me go through the IoT hardware features. Without these features, we cannot implement this IoT hardware into the use for urban farming. IoT hardware has to be lightweight, power efficient, and able to cover a large geographical area. It has to be robust and reliable just like servers. Most importantly, it must have communication capabilities. If not, we cannot talk to the sensor or retrieve data or study the data captured by the sensor. Also, networking on IoT. Basically, I will be talking about three kinds of networking on IoT. The WSN, M2M, which is machine to machine, and CPS. However, we will be focusing more on M2M, the non-IP protocol stacks. So for the non-IP protocol stacks, what we can see here are ZigBee, BLE, and EPC Global and Z-Wave. For ZigBee, it's a full communication stack based on the IEEE 802.15.4 standard for both the physical and Mac layers. For BLE, just take it like a more low powered Bluetooth. And for EPC Global and Z-Wave, it's a full integrated solution which is similar and relevant to UHF RFID devices for tagging of crops and equipment. In which we can see later in the example on Abbey Farm on how they actually make use of this technology to do UHF RFID tagging on their crops so that they can monitor the batches of the crops produced by them. Then I'll be talking on the IoT gateway 
the one machine to machine and the Intel gateway as an example. Okay, so this picture is actually a plan of the Abbey Farm at Ang Mo Kio. It is a true is a real case study and you can look it up on the news. So this is the farm they built. Basically you have aeroponics area and it's controlled by sensors using 5G technology. So this farm itself can be manned without any farmers. Okay, let's go into the IoT devices they use. So Abbey Farm actually worked with SPTEL, a government-backed company powered by SP Power, SP Group, and ST Engineering. So SPTEL actually came out with this light sensor, air temperature and humidity sensor to use in the farm. Also, they have an on-site control panel. So what's so fascinating about this is that as we know, IoT devices actually you have to actually you can you cannot find any IoT devices in the aftermarket that all works together as they are very proprietary. So for SPTEL, what's so good about them is that they can actually you can actually put in any kind of the IoT devices and get it to work through one platform. And these devices are actually all powered by LoRaWAN. As we know, LoRaWAN is inevitable that this protocol is used in IoT as it is a low powered WAN. It's very low power consumption, so you can actually use it without changing batteries for a very long duration. And most importantly, for smart farming to work in urban cities such as Singapore, Initiatives and efforts backed by the government are very essential. If not, such projects like Abbey Farm and many other uh, green solutions backed by our gov not backed by our government, will find it very hard to survive or to push on. And with that, I have come to my presentation. Thank you.